arrived at the popular Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache circuit in Interlagos Sao Paulo for the running of the Brazilian Grand Prix, the final race of the 2014 championship. Coming into this weekend, the remaining five drivers for the 2015 season have been announced. The first team news is that after so much speculation, Mercedes have announced that current Williams driver Will Neller will join the team in 2015 to partner alongside 2014 champion Jay McKenzie. Will's 2014 season hasn't been as good as last year when he was at Lotus as a result of a shaky first half of the season where he was constantly outpaced by Frenchman Roman Quag. However, in the second half of the season, Will has been able to demonstrate the pace that he had last year, with three wins to his name in Belgium, Italy and USA. He currently lies third in the Drivers' Championship and has a slim opportunity to take the runners up spot by the end of the weekend. His move to Mercedes will be a sigh of relief that he has a drive in 2015 and he hopes this move will finally give him a World Championship that he's been craving for for ages. This news means that Ways Cuba will potentially have to sit on the sidelines in 2015 as just like the man he succeeded last year, George Roux, he has been left without a drive. The second team news comes from McLaren as they have announced that after a close contest, the man who will partner alongside Franco Lopez in 2015, that man being current Sauber driver Oliver Glazebrook. Oliver has had a shaky 2014 season where for the third year in a row he is currently being beaten by his teammate in the Drivers' Championship. However, the second half of the season has been rather kind to Oliver as he has been able to get a good amount of points in the bag with most of them coming from his first ever podium at the Singapore Grand Prix. His move to McLaren next season gives him a breather as he thought for a moment he would be out of a drive and he will look to help McLaren in their development when they switch to Honda Power in 2015. The third team is that the new American team Haas have announced their second driver who will be the first GP2 graduate of 2015, that man being Polish driver Bartosz Kloss. Bartosz has had a very good rookie year in GP2. He currently lies third in the Drivers' Championship as a result of winning the previous race at Estriol. There have been some shaky moments for him during the season, but they have been overshadowed by a lot of brilliant performances along the way. He'll be looking to relish the opportunity in the top class next year, and will also be looking to help Haas in their first ever year. This news means that the team will field an all Polish lineup, with Kirishima De Rosa being announced earlier in the year. The fourth and final team news of the 2015 silly season is that Marusha, who will be renamed Mana Marusha in 2015, have announced that they, for the second season in a row, will field an all GP2 graduate lineup. These drivers being Polish driver Matthias Terwek and Brit Etienne Jones. The pair of them have had very impressive 2014 campaigns in GP2 after what had been a tricky 2013 for the pair of them. They'll both be looking to impress in their first ever season in 2015 and try and do what they can to drag the performance out of the manor as a result of the team having a year old Ferrari engine in the back for 2015. With these team leaders out of the way, we now know that along with Cameron Anderson and the retiring Rifki Fakrasay and Alex Southgate, these three drivers will not be on the grid in 2015. These are Caterham's Julius Anderson, Force India's Michael Mocho, and the biggest one being Mercedes's Waze Cuba. However, some of them, potentially all three of them, will still have a job in the top class as some of the test drivers have been announced for 2015. These are the test drivers confirmed so far. Ferrari will yet again have Jared Fosbury, Red Bull will have Isaac Fashere, Force India will keep hold of Michael Mocho, Sauber will have Julius Anderson, Marussia will rehire Daniel Adventure to be their test driver, and Lotus will have the services of Taravi Nauterion. The other five teams, Mercedes, Williams, McLaren, Toro Rosso and Haas are still yet to announce theirs as a result of drivers who have been offered a role still needing to decide whether they want to take it. These drivers who have been offered have a deadline of this Friday to make up their mind. If they are unable to do so for whatever reason, they will miss out on the opportunity and it will instead be offered to someone else. So if any of you have an offer to be a test driver, we recommend you reply with either a yes or no. The final news we have for this season is that the 2015 GP2 driver lineups have been announced with the teams and drivers displayed on your screens. Champions Trident will have the services of Jamie Griffiths and Ferrari test driver Jared Fosbury, Rappers will retain Snezana Radovodovic and she'll be joined by DTM runner-up Lean Campana, Racing Engineer will retain Paulino Tomaselli and he'll be joined by Gabriel Gomez who will enter his 8th successive season in GP2, MP Motorsport will have Formula E graduates Max Skillen and Alessandro Tomaselli who is the cousin of both Lorenzo and Paulino, Downs will retain Isaac Fashere and he'll be joined by Thomas Pascal, ART will have Tuavi Nauterion and DTM graduate Robin Kierlez, Carlin will have Henry Watts and Rodrigo Gomez, who is the younger brother of Gabriel Gomez. Arden will have Formula E graduates Felix Krebs, younger brother of Lucas, and Canadian Angus Munro. Russian time will retain Daniel Makama, and he'll be joined by DTM graduate Maxim Titkov. Campos will have Nicholas Zorbach and Andre Vaderi, and the new Statos Grand Prix team will have Formula E graduates Noel Schlegel and Laura Chong, meaning that GP2 will have two women in the series next year. Hashtag girl power, I say. Despite being the champion and not landing a drive in the top class, Nicolas Pascali will not return to defend his title in 2015, which leaves a question of where he'll be next year. Lucas Krebs is another one that hasn't been mentioned, and that is because after much deliberation, JWF1 has decided to ban him for good. 
At one point, JWF1 was tempted to bring him back, but one thing let Lucas down. That was the stalking he did on Robert Ionescu in the comment section of certain videos after he was banned for the remainder of the season that has cost him his future. There are suggestions that his popularity in the series may also have been a factor, but we will probably never know. As for the rest who have missed out on the drive in either the top class or GP2, they will have to apply for either GP4 DTM OC or GP4 Formula E OC if they want to still be in the GP4 OC fraternity. However, the sign ups for those two series will close within the next few days, so you better be quick if you want to drive in either of them. And that is it, not just for this week, but for this series of the GP4 OC News. I would like to take this time to thank everyone for the support you have given for the news format again. I've really enjoyed creating these and I can't wait to do them again. But also, I want to give a double thanks to Yui, not just for allowing me to do this, but also for what he has done in the last 7 seasons of GP4 OC. For those who are somehow unaware, this is Yui's last race he'll be hosting, as he'll be taking a lengthy break after this season and will not resume hosting until the 2017 season of GP4 OC, which will happen early next year. So my message to you, Yui, is thank you for an amazing 7 seasons and enjoy the lengthy break you will have and we will see you all again in 2017. As for the present day, the GP4 OC News will return midway in 2015 where it will last for 9 episodes as a result of there being 20 races in 2015 due to the Nürburgring being restated on the calendar. But until then, I have been JWF1, your temporary host for 2015 and 2016 and I will see you very, very soon.